Today, I want to look at a short but uh, non standard CRP5 question. It's not actually particularly difficult, but it's probably one you've not been shown how to do. Um, now, there are, in fact, a couple of ways of doing this, but I'll, I'll show you the one which actually uses the knowledge you have been shown. Uh, so it should fit much better with what you've already learned. Uh, and the question gives you the TAS and the CAS. Uh, and a pressure altitude and ask you for the Mach number. Now, what you're used to is working at Mach number from uh, TAS and temperature using the CRP5 or using the formula, we'll use the CRP5, but the formula should give you the same answer. What we've not got is the temperature. Now, technically we can work from CAS to, to Mach number just knowing the pressure altitude because the relationship between CAS and Mach number is the pressure is related to pressure altitude, not to uh, temperature at all. But we're not going to do that because that's that's a non-standard thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the TAS, the CAS and the pressure altitude to find the temperature. So that's going to be the first step. And obviously we're going to do that on the CRP5. So we're going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up uh, TAS and um, We'll, we'll line the TAS and the CAS up on the main scale of the CRP5 and use then the airspeed window. Um, we're going to look in there at 9,000 feet and find from that the temperature. And then we're going to use the airspeed window again now with the MAC number index. So we're going to put the, the temperature now against the MAC index, MAC uh, number index in that window. Uh, and then, of course, we can just look up TAS to give MAC number, which is our standard TAS to MAC number conversion, uh, because we now know the temperature. Uh, so from at that point, it's a fairly standard question. Uh, so let's look at how that goes on the CRP5. First task on the CRP5 was to find the temperature. And we said we would do that by lining up the TAS and the CAS. If we look at the labels here. This is why I like the CRP5 so much because the labels are nice and clear as to what's going on. We've got CAS on the outside and CAS on the inside, otherwise known as RAS, remember rectified airspeed or calibrated airspeed. So we've got a TAS of 210 knots from the question and a CAS of 190. So let's find 210 on the outer scale here and 190 on the inner scale. And I'm going to line those two up. So we were told that the TAS is 210 and the CAS is 190, and that's what I've written on here. Now we can look in the airspeed window, which is conveniently close, and we know that the aircraft is at 9,000 feet pressure altitude. So we've got pressure altitude in the window, temperature on the outer scales, outside scales. So we've got 9,000 feet here, and that goes to, looks like about minus 10, 23 degrees Celsius on the temperature scale there. Right. So the next thing was to use the Mach number index. Remember, if you uh, for those that have forgotten how to do TAS to Mach or Mach to TAS on the CRP5, what we need to do is we need to put the airspeed window now to the top of the CRP5. We know it's the top because Pooley's CRP5 is up right there. And that brings the Mach number index into the window. Yeah, so if you forget about Mach number, just bring the airspeed window to the top. Now we want to set that at minus 23 minus 23 degrees Celsius, Mach number index. And that gives us a TAS to Mach number calculation. Now, the TAS is still on the outside, as it says here. So we've got TAS on the outside, um, Mach number now on the inside. So we're looking for 210 knots TAS again. And that looks like 0 0.3, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 0.34. So 210 knots is Mach 0.34. Right, so we said that the answer to the question is Mach 0.34, and that, that's as far as it goes. We don't need to go any further than that. Okay, if you've got any questions, as usual, just put a comment below or uh, email me at the email address uh, given at the beginning. Thanks very much.